Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're going to analyze how Jose Mourinho's tactical setup has maximized Harry Kane's all-round center forward play. When we break it all down, first we're going to look at Spurs' shape. And what we end up seeing is that they do predominantly play in a 4-2-3-1. When we analyze how Mourinho's 4-2-3-1 does break forward, he wants his side to attack with five men. And what we end up seeing is that Kane is responsible for occupying the center backs. And out in those wider areas, Mourinho does prefer prefer playing wide forwards. With Mourinho's wider players playing narrow, that creates space for the fullbacks to push forward. And when you look at Mourinho's fullback selections, three out of the four of them are more attack-minded players. So you have the fullbacks pushing forward to provide creativity with their crosses. And then you have the wide forwards looking to break forward in behind. That leaves Harry Kane in that center of the pitch. And what we've seen from Harry Kane this season is that he's dropping off deeper to get on the ball. In the past, we've seen Kane drop off deeper into those zones because he was starved for service but under Mourinho when Kane drops deeper you have the wide forwards making runs in between the defensive gaps to break him behind and Kane is looking to pick them out if Kane can't find that pass he's looking to play the ball out into those wider areas before he does look to break into the box with Spurs pushing their fullbacks higher up the pitch that does require cover from the central midfielders and what we end up seeing is that Ndombele does push forward to provide an attacking threat as well and then you have Hoybier and Sissoko shifting out into the half spaces to provide cover for instance, if you have Reguilon pushing forward from left back, then Hoybier does drop off into the half spaces to cover for him, and Sissoko's covering the center of the pitch, and vice versa. If Daugherty or Aurier is pushing forward from right back, you'll have Sissoko shifting into that half space, and then you'll see Hoybier looking to protect the center of the pitch. So as you can see, Spurs are able to get creativity out in those wider areas from their full backs, from the center backs if they're looking to push forward to play long balls over the top or diagonal switches. There is the rare occasion where Hoybier is able to break midfield lines. And then there's Kane who's taken the responsibility of not only being Spurs' main goal scoring threat, but their chief creator. And in this video, we're going to break down several traits that does allow Kane to get his teammates into quality quality positions. First, we'll look at his link-up play. We often see Kane dropping off deeper in pockets of space or between the lines to get on the ball, and he's able to drag out defenders to get his teammates into good positions. If we shift to Spurs' most recent Premier League win against Manchester City, it's Kane receiving Bergwijn's nod down ahead of Laporte and Ruben Diaz. And with Bergwijn pushing forward to peg back Laporte, Ruben Diaz stays ahead of Kane, who plays a splitting pass between Diaz and Mares for Reguilon pushing forward to take on Walker. And if we look to one final example, it stems from the Spurs box, and it's Bergwijn picking up Mares' block cross ahead of Walker. And you could see Kane ahead of Ruben Diaz. Bergwijn pokes the ball to Kane dropping into his own third with Ruben Diaz applying immediate pressure but while Kane is being pegged backwards he's able to hold off Ruben Diaz and slide the ball back to Reguilon and that sees Kane serve as an outlet up front to help Spurs bypass Manchester City's press. Next we'll look at Kane's ability to hold up play in the channels and place his teammates into good positions and we'll focus solely on the West Brom game. When we look to the first example, it's Bale clipping the ball from around the Spurs box into the left channel over a Jai for Kane shifting into that area to drag out Bartley. Kane does well to hold off Bartley's challenge as Ajayi provides cover, but Kane locates Ndombele running towards the box beyond Livermore, so he plays a reverse ball over the top of Livermore to his Spurs teammate at the edge of the box. And Ndombele does well to control the ball with his chest ahead of Livermore and side foot a pass across O'Shea who shifted across to apply cover pressure for an unmarked Sun in right half space. And when we look to another example, with no pressure on Alderweireld around the Spurs box, we end up seeing the center back play a ball over the top into the right channel and that's where you see Bale dropping off and spinning across O'Shea towards the box freely and Kane darting between Bartley and O'Shea into that space to drag both defenders into that zone. And when Kane brings the ball down ahead of Bartley's incoming pressure, he takes his first touch across the West Brom center back towards the box. 
Kane has Sun running across Ajayi as one option, and Bale breaking freely off Livermore into the box at the far post because O'Shea opted to cover the front post, opposed to picking up his initial marker. So Kane picks out Bale making a late run into the box, but his lunging effort to get onto the ball is directed at a play. Next, we're going to shift to Kane's ability to create space for his teammates with his movement. If we shift to the Manchester United game, Lamella intercepts Maguire's pass in the final third, and we witness Sissoko dropping it off to Lamella. At that moment, you see Kane 1v1 with Bailly in Spurs' half, and Sun ahead of both Greenwood and Juan Basaka pushing forward. Lamella locates Sun speeding forward beyond Juan Basaka towards Manchester United's half, and Kane drifts laterally to the left to serve as an outlet, but he also creates more space for the Sun run by dragging out Bailly. That is when you see Lamella cutting across Bruno Fernandes and clipping a long ball over Matic for Sun to break free on goal, and while his first touch sets him into the box, his second touch bobbles off him and allows David De Gea to recover possession. We can also look to Sun's opener against Man City, and it's Hoybier playing a short pass across Kevin De Bruyne for Ndombele taking his first touch across Bernardo. And he locates Sun making a run into the Laporte Cancelo gap, with Kane occupying Laporte and Ruben Diaz. And as Ndombele looks to play that ball over the top, we witness Kane dropping a few yards deeper to pull out both Man City center backs, and that creates space for Sun to dart into. And Ndombele clips the ball over the center backs for Sun running across Cancelo to bring the ball down and fire a low effort beyond Ederson. Along with his ability to create chances for his teammates through his movement, Kane's ability to find his teammates with his passing is another significant trait. There's a time where you have Regulon receiving the ball that pulls out Juan Basaka, and you witness Sun drifting into space behind the Manchester United right back to drag out Bailly. You also see Kane dropping off Maguire and Lamella shifting laterally across Shaw as space is created. Regulon plays the ball across Juan Basaka for Kane, who pulls out Maguire, but Kane easily turns across the United center back, and you see Lamella dragging Shaw central and a huge gap for Aurier being created as Martial was tucked in on Sissoko. Kane ends up smashing the ball across Pog before Aurier breaking free down the right channel, and Aurier takes his touch into right half space, and he ends up forcing David De Gea into a save. We witness Kane dropping off into his own half to pick up Sun's blocked Cresswell cross to drag out Ogbonna, and Kane drops the ball off to Sun and drifts across Ogbonna and Cresswell into the right channel to receive possession from Sun just above half ahead of the West Ham left center back. As Sun instantly darts between Rice and Ogbonna towards the West Ham goal, this is where we see Kane bypassing Cresswell and Ogbonna with the ball into the right channel for Sun that drags out Balbuena, and he looks to pick out Bergwijn breaking to the six-yard box with Sofile tracking, but Sun's first-time ball falls to Fabianski. And if we shift back to the City game, first we could see Regulon's throw over Mares to Kane shifting away from Walker into a central position to control the ball between the lines. You instantly see Rodri attempting to track back and apply pressure as he was marking Ndombele, while Bergwijn attempts to dart across Diaz and Sun runs across Cancelo. Before Rodri can step in, Kane splits Ruben Diaz and Laporte for Sun running across Cancelo, but Sun takes his first touch heavy across an onrushing Ederson towards the left channel, and that halts the attack. However, minutes later, Lachelso was able to double Spurs his lead. Morris squeezes Regulon into his own half to win the ball, and we see Kane moving away from Laporte into space behind City's midfield bank as Rodri steps within close proximity of Sissoko and De Bruyne swarms Lachelso. Alderweireld hits Morris's loose pass towards the box first time over the City midfield bank for Kane dropping into a huge pocket of space ahead of the halfway circle, with Laporte retreating to close a running gap for Sun, who is goal side of Cancelo when Kane receives the ball. And this is where you could see Lachelso beginning to run between the De Bruyne Rodri gap. Kane begins to dribble at City's backline with Rodri failing to recover ground. And you could see Lachelso running beyond De Bruyne down the left channel with Sun darting between Cancelo and Laporte and Bergwijn beginning to dart across Diaz. 
the movement of Sun and Bergwijn creates a gap for Lachelso to charge into beyond Kevin De Bruyne. And before Rodri can step into Kane, he identifies Lachelso's run into that space. And with Bergwijn dragging Ruben Diaz narrow, Kane plays the ball into Lachelso's path, and he takes his first touch into the box to fire a low effort beyond Ederson. But the other key element to Spurs' success is the combination between Kane and Sun, with Kane dropping deeper to pick out Sun's runs in behind the Southampton defense. The other key element to Kane's impact to the Spurs side is his ability to help Spurs bypass a team playing a high press. When we look to the first example, we witness West Ham pressing Spurs back to Lloris with Fornals and Antonio on the center backs and Rice and Socek stepping to the midfield duo. When Lloris receives the ball, you could see Kane shifting into vacant space in the midfield zone and then demanding the ball. When Kane makes that movement, Balbuena and Sofal are monitoring Sun, and perhaps they hold their position due to Sun's 1v1 opener against Balbuena. But if you want to maintain a successful press, one of the West Ham defenders must step forward to apply pressure. By the time Lloris is prepared to lob the ball over the West Ham press, Kane is free in the midfield zone with neither Bowen, Sofal, or Balbuena stepping forward to apply pressure. So when that ball is played to Kane in the midfield zone, he helps Spurs bypass the press by bringing it down before Socek pushes Kane away from the ball. And if we look to one final example, we look to Man City's press with Jesus shifting to Dyer, Mares ahead of Reguilon, Rodri shifting to Ndombele, Ferdan Torres ahead of Alderweireld, and De Bruyne ahead of Hoybier. Dyer ends up bypassing Man City's press with a long ball into Kane, dropping into the midfield zone, and the Spurs striker chests the ball down, flicks it over Bernardo Silva, who does shift across by leaving Sissoko, and that ultimately leads in Kane winning a free kick. Hi everybody, thanks for watching and subscribe here for your latest tactical analysis and daily commentary on the interview show. And if that wasn't enough, don't forget you could find more organic, unfiltered soccer slash football analysis on the interviews podcast, the best soccer slash football podcast in the world, available on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and any Android apps on your Android devices.